What if I told you Yu-Gi-Oh's best card ever hasn't been printed yet? So last week, I made a custom Yu-Gi-Oh card and posted it on Twitter. And this is that card. I called it Forbidden Return just because it's a very simple quick play staple that kind of fits with all the Forbidden Chalice, Lance, and Droplet. But basically, it's a quick play spell card that says, target one face-up card your opponent controls, negate its effects, until the end of this turn. You can only activate one forbidden return per turn. And people basically lost their minds. 87,000 views and counting and a lot of comments. And before you comment on this video as well that this card exists, please read this again. Target one face up card your opponent controls. Negate its effects until the end of this turn. In this video, I'll be discussing why this card seems so simple, seems like it already exists, but it actually doesn't, and the reason why it's so incredibly broken. If you're not following me on Twitter or X, I post a lot of crazy stuff there. Might want to drop a follow. Link is in the description below. Let's get into it. Since the first set of the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG, The Legend of Blue-Eyes White Dragon, there has been a lot of really strong staple cards that all had pretty simple effects. For example, Raigeki, destroy all monsters your opponent controls, or Darkhold, that destroys every single monster on the field. Cards like Harpy's Feather Duster, that just destroys all your opponent's spells and traps, Heavy Storm, that pops everything, Change of Heart, that just steals a monster until the end of the turn. Those are all very simple effects, but all those cards have been banned at some point. Even cards like Monster Reborn, which is a normal spell that just revives a monster, was just too powerful back in the day. Today we got some of these cards back and most of them are unlimited or even at three like Regeki, but still, those cards have been very impactful. So why has there never been a card that just says target one face-up card your opponent controls and negate it? Of course, there are cards in the game that do that exact effect. Cards like Evolzar Lars, Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss, Sinful Spoils of Betrayal Silvera, Scourge of the White Forest, and many, many more. They all do the same thing, but those cards are usually either accessible only from the extra deck using specific monsters or are just archetypal cards that you need to control a different type of monster in order to even use them or have to pay a cost. But we have cards that are pretty similar, right? We have cards like Infinite Impermanence. We have cards like Forbidden Chalice and Forbidden Droplet. We even have a lot of stronger cards like Dark Ruler No More that negates every single monster on the field, but none of them are quite what this card does. So why is this so controversial and why am I talking so much about all of this? Currently, Yu-Gi-Oh! players don't really have a way or at least a generic way to interact with face-up normal trap cards. Think about that, for example. If you're playing into a field and you get hit with something like Dimensional Barrier, Different Dimension Ground, Eradicator Epidemic Virus, even Infinite Impermanence, there's no real way to negate that card with a staple that you just have in your deck. Of course, there are cards that can negate it. For example, Cyframe Gear Epsilon can negate any trap card, but you also have to play the driver and control no monsters. Wait, but there's also Crossout Designator. Correct, but for Crossout Designator, you have to play the specific target you're playing against. What if you're preparing to get debarriered, but eventually you get Eradicator Epidemic Virus, and all the spell cards just fly out of your hand. And of course, cards like Sales Band that basically do the same thing, but you have to prepare for the exact right card, and it's not reactive. Currently, in recent Yu-Gi-Oh sets, Konami have been pushing more generic quick play staples. Starting off with the very recent one, Final Bringer of the End Times. It's a quick play spell card that says target one monster you control and one card your opponent controls, destroy them. That is it. Can you believe that there's no one card, quick play card, that just destroys a card on the field? You always have to pay some kind of cost. You have to destroy a monster you control for final bringer, or for example, offerings to the doomed requires you to discard a card and skip your draw phase. More generic staples like Metal Tronus have been introduced that offer a pretty generic ray of negation or interaction. But again, you have to play a specific kind of monster in your deck or extra deck and play into a specific board that you're already prepared for. And even a card like Vesper Gearsu, which I absolutely love, it's a card that forces your opponent to make a decision. They can send as many monsters from their field as possible and then deal with the consequences based on how many monsters are left at resolution. So all, all of these are pretty spectacular, right? They all do really cool things. But still, there's no generic staple that just targets a card and says no. Let's talk about some pros and cons for a card like this. Some of the pros, it finally allows players to, in a generic way, 
interact with face up normal trap cards that have just been activated without having a specific one in deck for crossout for example or having no monsters for cyphering gear epsilon you just target it and negate it so this is obviously a bonus you can finally play around some very annoying floodgates that usually come in a normal trap form and we've seen with triple tactics thrust recently that some of these cards like a pointer of the red lotus get banned just because it's so easy to search them and most of the meta decks have those silver bullets that are usually normal traps another pro for making this card very balanced is the fact that it's a quick play spell card it cannot be searched with triple tactics thrust and with board breakers like dark ruler no more harpy's feather duster and even triple tactics talent those are all searchable with thrust which makes them much more easily accessible than a quick play spell that essentially you just have to draw and i think another good thing about this card is that it makes you consider the trade-offs and build your deck appropriately so let me give you an example and you in your head or in the comment section tell me what you think would you play this card over in infinite impermanence would you actually give up infinite impermanence in your deck to play this card probably the answer is no but infinite impermanence can only negate monsters yeah but it's also a normal trap it's a hand trap and it can be activated during both turns which forbidden return can only be activated on your turn or if you start it and you set it so let's think about other cards in the meta that are very similar one for one trait would you play this over cosmic cyclone would you play this over forbidden droplet would you even play this over Forbidden Chalice? I think the answer to most of these are maybe. Maybe Forbidden Chalice has probably passed its prime, but cards like Droplet offer a much wider array of negation and interaction that maybe this one for one negate isn't that good. So when you're considering whether this card is actually good or not, think about what would I take out and where would I play this in my deck? Is this a staple three of in any deck? Now, for the cons, there's not only pros. I think the most controversial aspect of this card is that it's essentially an Omni Negate. If I go first and I set this card, I can basically trade with any of my opponent's cards, right? If they hit me with any board breaker, a lightning storm, a duster, even a dark ruler, no more, I can finally be able to negate it without any cost at all. So for example, Solemn Judgment can negate summons and spell and trap activations, but this one could just negate it for free. It's of course not a counter trap. You can actually answer Forbidden Return with another copy of Forbidden Return to negate it, but essentially going first, it's pretty strong to have an additional negate on your board. But again, is it actually different than just having an additional Imperm or Cosmic Cyclone? Maybe it's a little bit more generic, but maybe this is the age of power creep. Another con for this card is that it's a hard once per turn activation. So contrary to cards like Raigeki or even Change of Heart and Monster Reborn and even Harpy's Feather Duster, which has always been at one, those cards are not once per turn at all. You can activate Raigeki three times and then of course normal summon Pydra. But this card is a hard once per turn. So it makes it a bit worse. Cards like Effect Veiler and Infinite Permanence are not even once per turn. You can activate three Imperms in a single turn. So it makes this card a little bit worse but it is still a one-for-one -one interaction so i think this is a super super interesting discussion that i think you should probably weigh in on in the comments below is a card like this custom card that i made forbidden return actually too powerful for the game today if you want to see the bustling discussion over on twitter about this card with over 100 comments head over to my x account and follow me there the link is in the description below really looking forward to hear your thoughts about this thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.